Beloved brothers and sisters, members of New Life Church, all in attendance, my viewers online, I take this opportunity. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Will you wave to the Lord? Hallelujah. Uh, we thank the Lord that already we have had three days with the Lord and we still have seven more days. And uh, if the promises of the Lord is anything to go by, we are not only expecting blessings, but we are expecting huge blessings uh, to attend us. So all that can hear my voice, whether physically attending here, whether online, I want to say that uh, you have a promise to that effect that uh, if you also tap into the promises of the Lord, God is going to bless you abundantly. So there are certain uh, programs. There, are, there is a way we are supposed to relate to this program so that we can tap maximally into the blessings of this program. Pastor already announced during the weekdays between 6.30 and 7.30 we meet in the church here. And uh, I consider it a very special program because it is uh, done in the spirit of Gideon. You know, in Gideon's day, God told him, I'm ready to give you the victory. The mistake is one. And the mistake was that there were too many for God. So he told them, reduce the numbers. Make a declaration that all who are set to fight, but inside them they are trembling, go home. So out of 32,000, they remained 10,000. So 22,000 went home. And you know, those days, the gender issues were not so prominent. All those were men. So 22,000 went home on account of cowardice. So when you look at these trousers, don't you think they stand for courage? These are some of the greatest cowards we have in the world, these trousers you are seeing here. So they went home. Then God still said, no, that's not good enough. I will now assist you. There will be an obstacle. Let them go through a river. And those who survive, then I'll give you the victory. And ultimately, 300 survived. 300 out of approximately 30,000. That is about 1%. So I'm looking for that 1% to be there in the morning. And the power of God is going to attend us. So I'm asking that as many as possible keep away so that we can have that power of the Lord so that all those that come, they will meet with God and God is going to bless them. Then, between one and two, we also meet here for midday prayers and God will meet us at the point of our needs. Then on Sunday, tomorrow, between, three, uh, uh, between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m., some hours, a couple of hours, we will be here in the church crying to the Lord. I do not want to promise that it will be a very exciting program. No, you'll be disappointed. But I can speak with power and authority. The results are going to be exciting. The results are going to be interesting. So tomorrow, the usual program between 6.30 and 7.30 will be there. That one runs throughout. Then on Wednesday, on Sunday, you can still eat and pray. If you wish, you can call it eating and praying. But on, on Wednesday, we'll still run a program between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. And for those that manage, for those that are able, we will also fast. So I'm announcing that well in advance so that you begin negotiating permission. You begin organizing yourselves so that you'll be there and the Lord will be there to bless us. If you interrupt your programs by coming to seek the face of the Lord, the Lord is going to interrupt you with the blessings. 
I'm sure you wouldn't mind if you are interrupted with the blessings of the Lord. Then, of course, our usual program, you know when it starts, uh, between 6 and about 7. But for today, being Sabbath, by 4, we should be uh, praying, and we expect huge blessings. I'm going to run a very special program and the online viewers have been uh, asking that they have been isolated in the morning and midday programs. But the one of the evening now, even the prayer program that I'm going to run, which will be two hours, it can even go to three hours, it's going to be an online program. And I'm inviting all viewers to come and participate as we seek the face of the Lord. Then a very important part of the program is you must have the outreach spirit. You know, we are seeking the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. One of the important components is that eh, we must be seeking for souls. For that matter, we invited a friend here today, and the friend has made it here. If you did, raise up your hand. You invited a friend to this meeting, and the friend has made it here. This will tell me now how, you, how well you are prepared to tap on the blessings of the Lord. You invited a friend here, and the friend has made it here. It looks like you did not succeed. Okay, how many invited friends, but the friends did not make it here? If you did, raise up your hand. I can see a hand there. I can see a hand there. You stand, you stand. All those that invited friends and the friends, eh? the friends though did not make it, but they invited friends. Okay, if you count, one, two, three. If today God said, I am winking at all your sins, I'm turning, uh, I mean, I'm closing my eyes on your sins, and all those who invited friends will make it to heaven. How many do you think will make it to heaven in this church? How many do you see? Three. So don't ridicule Noah. Noah's people and say they just could not enter the boat. So how many are saying, God, we may have failed, but... Come these other days, by the grace of the Lord, we want to invite our friends. If you are telling God that, raise up your hand. I want to believe you are serious. I don't doubt your sincerity. So right from even this afternoon, tomorrow, the other days, invite your friends. And often, the blessings of the Lord are commensurate with our outreach activities. So these ones who invited, one I know is Wesonga. How many did you invite? Even if none of them made it here. Five. The other one there, you can shout your name. Is it Felix? How many did you invite? One. There was another one also. Shout your name and tell us the number you invited. The name is your name and you needed one. So for today, the top evangelist, although the score is a bit low because the friends did not come, is a Wesonga. You almost scored. He came very close to scoring. We hope that from tomorrow he will start scoring and the other will start scoring. So with that now. I want us to give some testimonies, one or two testimonies, then we'll share, we'll break the bread of life. As I do the testimony, i would share the testimony regarding somebody in the States. What's that name? Who remembers? Bob. Bob is here with us. Where is Bob? 
Bob should be somewhere. Come over here so that you can confirm the testimony. Bringing in the ship, bringing in the ship, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the ship, bringing in the ship, bringing in the ship, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the ship. Deborah also becoming Deborah Deborah, Deborah I talked with in the morning If you are there You can come over here And for one or two minutes you can share your testimony Tell me what I said You went to the CEO Prepared to get what? Prepared to get? Yes A sack Regret he was already employed A sack Prepared to get a sack But instead he got what did he get? Yes, he, was, he went prepared to get a sack, but instead he got a promotion. In one minute or so, I want him to confirm that he's Bob, and he confirms that testimony. Of course, you can say a word of hello. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Bob Ongaro. And I am the, the middle brother to Naftal, and there is a young one sitting back there. Um, but I, I just want to thank the Lord that I'm able to stand before this big church. This is about um, five times bigger than my church back in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. So it is a big crowd. But uh, I, I just want to... Thank God that every time you're sitting in front of, uh, or you're standing in front of the saints like this, it's an, op an opportunity to testify. Uh, but to get back to the testimony that my brother was talking about, um, not too long ago, uh, one minute or so. Uh, yes, not too long ago, one of my supervisors walked to my office and told me just to let you know you're getting fired today. And that startled me because I, immediately she said that I'm thinking bills. How do I pay my bills? And I went to the bathroom to pray. And I remembered, you know, the book of uh, um, Psalms 46 verse 10. It says, be still and know that I'm what? I'm the Lord. So I prayed, I said, Lord, you know, I need this job, but if I'm going to get fired, you'll open the way. When I went to see my supervisor, soon later, when I, was, I went to see the director, she was more of telling me to show cause why I should not be fired. And uh, we went on and on, and uh, not too long after that, my director realized that she has been misled into believing that I was unproductive, insufficient, and all that. And it, when I walked to our office, there was, I could see the termination letter with my name on her desk. So I knew for sure that I am going. So after a while, I saw her take the same letter and put it on a shredder and shredded it. And at that point, I'm thinking, what am I witnessing? And then she turned around and said, have you ever thought of being a supervisor in this company? And I say, what? I say, have you ever thought of being a supervisor in this company? And I, I, I startled a little bit and I told her, well, you know, I, I won't do it because of one, the Sabbath day. And uh, she told me, no, 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 listen, I, 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 you can work from Sunday to Wednesday or Thursday and you have plenty of time to do your Sabbath thing. And then I said, well, I will take it. And uh, that's my short testimony, but after that I became a supervisor and I, the Lord opened the doors and uh, I have even gone beyond the supervisor's position, I've gone beyond the manager's position and I'm still climbing and I thank the Lord for that. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe in the afternoon we shall say a little more. And uh, for now, 
I also want to share a testimony. Maybe Deborah can come in the afternoon. Maybe she's not close by here. I want to share two testimonies. Then after that, we'll pray and I'll preach. But in the afternoon, I'm going to run a prayer session. And I want to read this, why I expect the prayer session to be powerful. One, prayer is a power if we stand by the promises that are recorded in the Bible. Two, when we unite in prayer, the power increases. Three, in harmony in line with Gideon's principle, ordinarily, traditionally, where do we have more people attending the service in the morning or after lunch? Ordinarily, it's in the morning, isn't it? So that will increase our power. I know many of you are going. So as many of you are going, you will leave the little group that is remaining, like Gideon's group, and we will not spare those blessings. Then the other reason why I expect a lot of power, I want to read it, I read it before, Desire of Ages, page 207, paragraph 2. The demands upon God are even greater upon the Sabbath than upon other days. His people then leave their usual employment and spend their time in meditation and worship. Now, what I wanted you to get is this. They ask more favors of him on the Sabbath than upon other days. You can ask for favors from God on Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, but on Sabbath, God expects that we are asking more. Can God expect us to ask more if he's not prepared to give more? Certainly not. Let me continue reading. They demand his special attention when, can you shout that? On Sabbath. They, they crave his choicest blessings when, shout that, on Sabbath. Now, the, 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 the promise I wanted us to grasp is this. God does not wait for the Sabbath to pass before he grants uh, these requests. Is that a small promise? So the Sabbath is a special day. So this evening when we pray, we are going to claim this promise. And God will meet us at the point of our needs for the reasons I've said. I'll repeat the reasons. One, prayer is a power. Two, it's going to be united prayer. Three, many of you will have gone. So it will be Gideon's group that will increase our power. So the meeting after lunch is going to be more powerful than the meeting here. After all here, I will talk about the power of God. I will talk about God. There we are going to talk to God. Then it's going to be prayers on Sabbath. So if you have an issue, you have something, you have a breakthrough you want this afternoon, then I will also make some other announcements. So I start the testimonies. I'm going to do two testimonies. Beginning of last year, there was this gentleman, Maroria. Normally, the form of greetings at the beginning of the year, more so on the first day, you know how the greetings go. Can you greet me? Yes, Happy New Year. Now, that Happy New Year, it happened to fall on a Friday, and Maroria got a letter from his employer, and it had these three main phrases. It stated, you are going for an indefinite, compulsory, and paid leave. If you know how to interpret, that is a polite language of telling you, you are actually sacked. So Maroria was not amused at those greetings. It, rather for him, it was a bad new year. Then he happened to worship in Kisi Central Church, and the elder there announced the 10 days of prayer. He, he has been attending church in Kisi New Life, but for some reason now, he decided to attend in Kisi Central. When they announced the 10 days of prayer, he remembered a Sabbath where we did praying and fasting at Kisi, at Kisi New Life Church. That, that time, the burden, his burden was his brother who seemed to be committed to the Lord, but his performance was wanting. 
Let me give you an idea about the performance. He was a candidate um, soon to take his KCSE examination. And the exam before, you know, after mock, what we can call pre-mock, his highest grades in that exam were three. So one is scored. Where is scored highest? D minus. The other one was D minus. The other one was D minus. Those were his best, best performed subjects. Normally you are ranked on how many subjects? Seven. So four are remaining. If his best were three with D minus, you can guess the grades for the others. Can you shout the other grade? E. So the other four was E, 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 giving you a mean grade of E. Now, that was his burden when we were doing praying and fasting. So he prayed, he cried to the Lord. Under normal circumstances, if somebody scores an E and he improves, what grade can he get? And anyway, we shall still appreciate even a D minus, we shall appreciate, even a D. So let me tell you the outcome after that prayer. He sat for his KCSC. His brother did not score an E in KCSE. It wasn't a D minus. It wasn't a D. It wasn't a D plus. It wasn't a C minus. It, was a, it wasn't a C. He landed at C plus, and as we talk, is a regular student in Maseno University. That experience encouraged the brother so much. You know, spirit of prophecy tells us we can only be afraid of the future only as we forget God's dealings with us in the past. So he said, if I cried on behalf of my brother and he turned around his grades, now I have a sack. And he faithfully prayed. Sometimes trouble is a blessing. I think many of you are not turning up for the prayer meetings because you are waiting for trouble. Maybe you are telling God, send us trouble, then we shall come. So this man here, he attended all the prayer meetings. The morning one, the bonus one, he attended. The midday, which is also bonus, he attended. In fact, I did not even get opportunity to attend the midday, but he attended. And all of, all of that... Then, as we winded up the prayer meeting, there was the option of either a day of prayer or a night of prayer. We picked on a day of prayer. We started on Sunday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And by the end of the program, Maroria had three jobs. And we praise the name of the Lord for that. But he saw the face of the Lord. And he was praying in the church. Now, I want to thank the Lord. Our online viewers are a good number, and I commend you for that. Certainly, you will have a blessing. But I will also say this. Those who trace their steps to this house of the Lord, the Bible says, mine house shall be called a house of prayer. The online viewers, certainly you will be blessed. But over here, the blessings will be more. So I encourage you and I challenge you, trace your steps over here. That is the one testimony. My final testimony, a couple of years ago, I was uh, doing a week of camp preparation in one of the churches in Kisumu. And then one lady approached me and told me to pay them a visit at their home. Then as I went there, the husband was there, the mother-in-law was there, but she seems to be very stressed. Then she told me, over the years, I have conceived five times, and I have had five miscarriages, and it always occurs around the fifth or sixth month. And even as she was talking, she was expectant, and it was approaching that time. So you know what she asked? Pray about the same, that God can intervene. I remember we prayed. I prayed. And because I did not want to bring, I did not want to uh, 
talk about our case in the church. I remember one of the prayer items I made in that church. I said that we pray for all the expectant mothers, but I was actually targeting her. After that, come the month of, I remember it was November, November approaching December, God blessed her with a baby boy. They invited me to the family. We celebrated. And I remember I asked her now, I don't want to tell you her name, what is the name of this uh, boy here? She asked me, do I have another name other than Gekonge? Almost said, I thought you would wait, I die first. So, if you go to those churches in Kisumu, I don't want to mention the name of the church, you do your research. There is a Gekonge Junior there. Then don't talk much, just know that is the miracle of the Lord. Now, that was elsewhere. I want to tell you that as we seek the face of the Lord, God has already prepared for us blessings for us. I don't know which blessings those are. And for now, I want us to invite the power and the presence of the Lord. I want us to pray. And really pray for me because from the way I've seen you are organized as a church, from the children's stories here, the music, it was so much I mean, captivating. I was captured. Really pray for me. And uh, we shall have a uh, sister uh, our sister here will, will sing for us, but I want to ask that you pray for this. First item you pray for, pray for yourself, that God will open your heart to receive the message and the blessings that God has set aside for you. Can you point to the person I've said you are going to pray for? You see, some people don't know themselves. I said you pray for yourself. Second item, I want you to pray for five people that are gathered here. And among the five people, two of them should be your immediate neighbors. Then three others, then uh, you can pay also for Bob's testimony by praying for Bob as well. Then, not a long prayer. Just say, God, touch brother so-and-so, bless sister so-and-so, work a miracle in brother so-and-so, until they reach five, then plus Bob. The third item, pray for the facilitator. Do you still remember his name? Shout it. Yes, Gekonge or Naftal. Pray that the power of God will rest upon me that in turn I'm going to be a blessing to you. Fourth item, cast out demonic forces and agencies from our midst in the name of? We all have that power and authority even if you are as small as these people I'm seeing over here. And while you cast out the demonic forces and the agencies, Pray for the media broadcasts that we have here. Pray against any distractions. Pray for the online viewers. And I pray that the chains are going to be broken, that many will take a stand for the Lord or reaffirm their dedication. Finally, invite the power and the presence of the Lord. And we'll do a quick reminder. First item I said we are praying for. Yes. Second item? Five plus who? Bob. You pay for that testimony. Third item? Can you point at that man? Uh -huh. Work on that man so that in turn he can work on you by the word of God. And the other item? Cast out demonic forces and agencies from our midst in the name of? Jesus, and I pray against all distractions. Pray for the media program here. Pray for the speaker here. Pray for against the spirit of confusion and disorder. And finally, invite the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So as you do that, our sister will sing for us burdens. Don't sing with her. As she sings, you pray. First stanza, second stanza, then I will pray. So as she sings, don't sing with her. You can only pray for her because uh, when she sings, she might not have the capacity to pray for herself. So you begin as we pray. Days 
Mighty, kind, and loving Heavenly Father, once again we glorify and we praise your name. And we thank you for this opportunity you have granted us to come before you, knowing you are the King of kings, source of life, joy, and wisdom. Forgive us our sins, wash us by the blood of thy Son, sanctify us, and make us worthy in your sight. Let this worship be acceptable to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bind and cast out demonic forces and agencies from our midst. Break the chains of wickedness and set us free. We pray against all distractions. We pray, Lord, for the media transmissions. We pray for the online viewers, Lord. We want to pray that you break all chains the Lord threatened to prevent our approach to you. We invite the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. May heaven come down and fellowship with us as a group, as a church, the online viewers. And Father, we want to pray that the Holy Spirit will prepare us that when you come in the clouds of heaven from this physical congregation here, from the online viewers, Lord, many will say hallelujah. This is the great God and Savior we have been waiting for. For we ask that in the mighty and blessed name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 10, starting from verses 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, 
a blind man, but Marius, which means son of Timarius, was sitting by the roadside begging. The disability of this man here rendered him a beggar. In the disability of this man here, in the circumstances of this man here, we see the plight of our world eh? who were once cheated through our first parents, Adam and Eve, that if you disobey God, eh, you will attain a higher status of existence. So in the plight of this man here, we are to read the plight of the world. The world is one vast place of misery and suffering. So the Bible continues to tell us, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In the response of this man here, we see the appropriate response that the world should make to Jesus. Actually, our greatest need in the world, we have need of many other physical items, but the greatest need of the world is the need for Jesus. I want you to point at your neighbor and tell him all you need is Jesus. Point at yourself and say, all I need is Jesus. Somebody once sing a song like this, I will attempt. Eh? All you need is Jesus, the one who died for you. All you need is Jesus, the one who died for you. All you need is Jesus, the one who died for you. All you need is Jesus, the one who died for you. All I need is Jesus, the one who died for me. All I need is Jesus, the one who died for me. I want you now to sing to your neighbor pointing at him. Sing to him that song. All you need is Jesus, the one who died for you. All you need is Jesus, the one who died for you. Sing for yourself. All I need is Jesus, the one who died for me. All I need is Jesus, the one who died for me. His response was the most appropriate thing he could ever do. Unfortunately, not many, as it happens in our day, supported him in that response. People would have thought that this man here, going now to seek for the blessings of Jesus, would be encouraged by all means. But the Bible tells us, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. In that rebuke, we see the many obstacles, unfortunately, that must be faced by those ones that wish to seek the blessings of the Lord. Sometimes it is opposition from relatives. Sometimes it is from the peers, your group, your associates. Even when you are doing a good thing, even when you are doing something that 100% that seems to be the logical thing to do, I've realized that eh, there will always be opposition. I remember when we were doing an evangelistic campaign in Nairobi West, one of those chokoras, he was living in one of those trenches. He decided for Christ. He started bathing. His appearance changed. Then one of their leaders now faced us. What has it that we hear you have taken one of us? Then I said, what is the problem? He has not been bathing. He has not been dressing well. He has not even been eating. No, they say, no, you did not even seek our permission. We are told you have taken one of us. I did not know that those chokoras also had their leaders there. All the same, he faced opposition. 
But the worst opposition we shall ever face is the one that comes from the church members. You remember when the story of the, that prodigal son, when he was coming home, when they, it was all rejoicing, the brother said, no, something is not right here. Something is wrong. There will be those church members, unfortunately. I hope they are elsewhere, because when I look at your faces there, I read love. I read the love of God. I want to share with you this quotation from one of my favorite authors, Selected Messages, page 122, paragraph 2. We have far more to fear from within than from without. The hindrances to strength and success are a far greater from the church itself than from the world. This author here makes a startling statement that we expect opposition, obstacles right in the church of God. That is why when you declare, declare for Jesus, you must know who you are serving. But all the same, this man here, there is a lot to learn from him. With that opposition, the Bible tells us, this man here, he shouted the more, son of David, have mercy on me. At first, when he was told, he had heard about the tidings of Christ, how he had healed many people, how he had become a blessing for many people, and you know he was blind. So he had to shout so that he catches the attention of Jesus. So when he hears that that is Jesus, there he is, he says, son of David, have mercy on me. Then they rebuked him. They told him, be quiet. But the Bible says eh, he shouts even more. As they told him, you be quiet. Probably I can imagine they were telling him, you are a nuisance. But he shouts even more and he says, eh, son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. My brothers and sisters, for those that will make it to heaven, they must turn a deaf ear to a lot of destructions that are bound to come your way. This man was focused. Yes, they told him be quiet, but I can imagine in his face he was saying, I'm not addressing you, I'm addressing Jesus. As long as your conscience is, your conscience is clear, you are seeking Jesus, eh? go ahead. For the Bible elsewhere says, I have set an open door for you and nobody, nobody in the world has authority to close that door. Praise the name of the Lord. What an encouragement. There are those ones who would seek to close heaven for others. Unfortunately, some in the, in the church, they would want to lock out heaven from others. But when we know who we are serving, the same Jesus who in Revelation has said, eh, I have set an open door for you and eh, nobody can shut it. When I open a door, nobody can shut it. And when I close a door, nobody can shut that door. So this man, he shouts. And as he shouts, the Bible says, ultimately, he gets the attention of Jesus. The Bible says, Jesus stopped. And he didn't just stop, he said, call him. My dear brothers and sisters, my viewers online, the most important attention we seek, even if you don't get attention from anybody else, but you get attention from Jesus, you get attention from God, that is all that matters to you in this world. You know, if you get the attention of Jesus and he doesn't just stop, he stops, then he says, call him. And you know, all those crowds were following Jesus. So when Jesus stops, they are bound to stop. But you know, Jesus stops because he has heeded the call from the blind beggar. You see, ordinarily, you might not have influence among the crowds. But 
If you can lay hold of Christ, Christ can stop the crowd for you. In other words, when you are with Christ, eh, you wield eh, enormous, eh, uh, enormous power, enormous influence. So now, he calls upon, the, upon, upon Jesus, and Jesus stops. But you know it wasn't his. He has been rebuked. He has been mocked. He has been ridiculed. All kinds of things have happened, eh? but he has persisted. No wonder the Bible states in our key text, Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jesus does not want a divided attention. In our pursuit of the Lord, we must be, and we, it must be without uh, reservations. And this is what he did. This man calls upon Jesus. They tell him to stop. In fact, he's rebuked, eh? but he shouts even the more. There is power in persistence. We must persist in our pursuit of the Lord. In spite of the obstacles, nevertheless, you must press on. You know, this persistence, like the persistence of this man, one can interpret it for stubbornness. Somehow, in seeking the blessings of the Lord, there must be an element of stubbornness. Jesus gives this startling message in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 12. Since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has been obtained by violence, and only the violent obtain it. So this man, in a sense, he was violent. When we turn to the spirit of prophecy, it tells us this violence here is not physical violence. It has to do with the pleading, pleading with God, not giving up. So in a way, when Jacob that night in the book of Genesis 32, verse 36, when he recognized that who, the one I've been fighting with eh, is not an ordinary man, this was uh, either God or an angel from God. Eh, after that, now, he got hold of him. In his mind, it was like, I have discovered who you are. You are a being from heaven. And I know the character of the beings from heaven. It is their purpose to bless. So he told him, now that I've discovered who you are, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And sure enough, Jacob was blessed. This 10 days here is looking for a person who is not just casual. Somebody, when he comes to the presence of the Lord, you know you are seeking God. There could be destructions, eh? but your focus is on Jesus. Listen to this message here. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 203, paragraph 1. Jacob prevailed because he was persevering and determined. His experience testifies to the power of importunate prayer. It is now that we are to learn this lesson of prevailing prayer, of unyielding faith. So we're not just talking about prayer here. We are talking about uh, unyielding faith, perseverance in prayer. Now listen to this statement here. The greatest victories to the church of Christ or to the individual Christian are not those that are gained by talent or education, by wealth or the favor of men. Much as the church of God requires talent, we require educated people. We require informed people. We need money. Yet, that is not what has brought the greatest uh, success or victories to the church of God. They are those victories that are gained uh, in the audience chamber with God when earnest, agonizing faith uh, lays hold uh, upon the mighty arm of power. You know, 
I was baptized in my church, Kisses Central. I saw how the church was born. The late Stafford did a campaign, and the many of the people of influence in that town got converted, and we praised the Lord. It had all kinds of dignitaries. Members of parliament were there, senior government officers, and I cannot forget this remark when somebody said that in six months' time, we shall have completed building the structure here for the Lord. Those of you who are acquainted with how long it took, it took several years. I will find out how. You know, don't count, don't count on money that is in people's pockets. That is their money. It requires a miracle for that money to come out of that pocket. You know, there are people who think like that. They see so-and-so there is a financial heavyweight. So-and-so there, so things are going to happen. You will wait and wait. You also need another class of heavyweights. They forgot to count men and men of faith. I'm telling you, we are people in the church of God. They might not have money, but when they pray, money will come out of your pockets. So that's what they forgot. They were only counting those heavy, 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 heavy people there, men of dignity, financial, financial giants there. But they forgot that, eh? more importantly, what this is telling us here, they are the victories that are gained eh? we in the audience chamber with God when earnest, agonizing faith eh? lays hold eh? upon the mighty arm of power. So there are those ones who are in the church of God here. Those are the ones that are behind a lot of success. Those are behind the ones that are behind the victories that have attended the church of God. So such was this man here. But my was here. In a sense, he was a hero. He did not suffer any destruction. And he pressed. And why it gave him that power to press like that? It wasn't actually pride as it would appear to be, but this man here understood the character of God. This man here knew the character of God. For the Bible tells us, in the book of John chapter 6, verse 37, all those that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. This man prays here, he said, yes, you, uh, in, uh, you in this uh, procession here, you do not uh, want to entertain me, but the one who I'm shouting to, I know his character. I know he will never turn, uh, turn me away. By the way, for you to press to the Lord, you, under, you need to understand his character. So finally, he wins the attention of Jesus, and as he wins the attention of Jesus, Jesus shouts, call him. And it is interesting. The very people that rebuked him, they called to the blind man and they said, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. The very people that rebuked him, when they saw he had won the attention of Jesus, by the way, they turned up to be his cheering squad. My Bible says, cheer up. I know many people who on account of obstacles, either family obstacles, maybe work-related, maybe financial, maybe sickness, who had been long admirers of Christ. They had identified with Christ, but they did not press on. Let me tell you, every one of my listeners, every one of my viewers, you have robbed God the opportunity to make you a subject eh, through whom he can show his power to deliver. So these people here, when they saw that, eh, this man here, who they were rebuking, they were calling a nuisance, eh, they immediately turned around, eh, they changed their minds, eh, and they became now his cheering squad. Let me tell you, if you hold on unto Jesus, those who ridicule you, on account of your belief in God, one day they are going to cheer you up. I remember this lady, this mama, she came to me and she was in a financial mess. Their family was in a mess. Of course, I asked them now, I asked her, 
do you return the tithe of the Lord so that we can claim Malachi 3.10? She said, honestly, I've not been doing that. Then I said, you'd better reform because we're not able to do that. This is the way she responded. She said, I'm not able to control my husband, but that, that the resources that come to me, those ones that I can say are mine, I vow from today, I will always return what belongs to the Lord. And she went ahead and started practicing that. But you know, in this age, you want when you give today, pop, you see the blessings there. Otherwise, you give up. Her circumstances seemed to move from bad to worse, but I like it, she held on. In fact, she had to have now a fundraiser. We had to fundraise for her. I remember the fundraising was around in November. Then, from, the, from what was collected there, she took 10% and gave to the Lord. Some of those that had contributed got to learn that, where she saw fire. They summoned her. You told us you were, in a, you were in a financial mess. We have taken money out of our pockets, but we are coming to learn that eh? out of that money, you have also taken, and you have taken to men in the church. You know, that's the way the world views you. But I like it. She stood her ground and she said, I made a vow to the Lord, and I'm not about to break it. She turned a deaf ear to them. Say what you can, but it is a vow I made between I and my God. Then I don't know how God works. Come January, that was November, come January the following year, like now here, like now a time like this, miraculously, think God was fulfilling that Malachi 3.10, she gets a job where she has a five-digit salary. Oh, my God. All those people immediately, they came congratulating her. And you know what they were telling her? What have we always told you? Stick to your God and God will never forsake you. Is that what they were always telling her? Uh, you know, they are telling her, uh, you are doing exactly what we have told you. We have always told you, seek with God, stand with your God, and God will never forsake you. But of course, they were mocking her. They were hostile. I want to tell you, there is somebody in this congregation, among my online viewers, there is somebody perhaps who God had called, you, had, you have even called it quits on account of the pressure that you are facing, I want to tell you that you have robbed God a precious opportunity. If you held on, those who mocked you, by now God would have turned around the circumstances and they would be among your cheering squad. So this man wins the attention of Jesus and as they call him, the Bible says, he threw his cloak aside, jumped to his feet, and came to Jesus. This man throws his cloak aside. He does not want to entertain anything that will come, that will be an obstacle. And Jesus poses the question to him, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. I like the way he is specific. You know, some of us have never been abundantly blessed by the Lord because we have never even been specific to the Lord. The Bible says, Jesus said, Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Actually, what was moving this man all along was he exercised faith in Jesus. He exercised faith in God. If you exercise faith in Jesus, you exercise faith in God, that faith now will enable you to face and overcome all the distractions. You know, often we blame our status, our spiritual status on circumstances. Actually, what you are confessing is that eh, you probably had put your faith in the church or in men, but not in God. Because when you have put your faith in Jesus, notwithstanding what you go through, you will still be able to say like Job, I know whom I have believed. So this man here finally is able to see, perhaps for the first time, and he has got the object that he was seeking for. Now, 
what was this message that was so powerful that makes this man here to get a blessing from Jesus? When we go to the message, the message was very simple. Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. The 7.8 billion that we have in the world here, the Bible tells us we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We are all in need, in need of the mercy of God or we all perish. When we say Happy New Year, it must start by you recognizing that eh, you need mercy from God. I like biographies. There is this man here, Simpson. Is largely, there were others, but is the main character that is credited with the discovery of these uh, anesthetics, anesthesia, we know what it is. I myself, I know how important it is. On two accounts, one when I suffered a dislocation here, I remember when the medic or whoever it was, he came and uh, inserted that injection. Then he, started, he told me, begin counting from 10 downwards. I remember I started 10, 9, 8, 7. I'm not sure I mentioned 6. The next time I woke up, there was a plaster around me, and I never experienced the pain. It has not always been the case. I remember in World War, when they had to do amputation, they get strong men, five strong men to hold you from one side, the other five men hold you from one side, then they begin cutting through you. I want you to appreciate what this man was credited for. The other time is when I visited a dentist. A little earlier there was pain. But the last time, children don't take many sweets. I took many sweets and it cost me some of my teeth. So when I went there, after his injections, by the way, I, don't, I thought the dentist was still trying to lay a proper grip. When he suddenly shows me my tooth, then I said, what is happening? He confided in me, he told me, the science of anesthesia is so well developed, if I inflict pain on you, I'm actually supposed to be taken to court. And because I live in this area, I've been a beneficiary of that. So the man credited with that discovery is Simpson. At one time, his country, they had a day for Simpson to honor him. So they had a festival, they had celebrations. Then the defining moment comes when they told Simpson now, we want to recognize now your achievements. Tell us, what has been your greatest discovery in this life? And everybody expected what he was to say. Then he says... Number one, my greatest discovery is that I'm a big sinner. I'm a great sinner. Number two discovery, that Jesus is a great savior. It was startling, but I want to tell you, that is the foundation of prosperity. It is the foundation of success. When you discover that, you are a born a sinner. We are inclined to sin. And no amount of changing, no amount of efforts can change us unless we get to Jesus. I'm aware most of the people I'm addressing are professionals. They are scholars. It has taken effort for you to attain your scholarly attainments. It has taken an effort. But I want to tell you one thing. You are all born professional sinners. You don't need training. The Bible states that in the book of Romans chapter 3, verses 23, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And our only hope is the grace of Jesus Christ. And this grace of Jesus Christ, ordinarily, we take it for granted, but we need a time when we cry to the Lord, just like this man here said, have mercy on me. You could be an active member of the church. You could be a leader in the church. You could be a respected man in the church, but if you cannot recognize 
a moment when you saw your sinfulness and you had an occasion to go before the Lord and you cry before the Lord, you are yet in your sinners. Your activities, by the way, they amount to drama in the church. And the drama will one day come to an end. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 158, this author tells us the formula of obtaining that grace. And the grace of the Lord is what we must have, that power that saves us, that power that comes to sin us, that we don't merit, but nevertheless, eh, when we cry, it comes to us. Is the beautiful power that is called by the beautiful name, the grace of the Lord. The grace of God, the grace of God, it is so sweet, it is so sweet. The grace of God, the grace of God, it is so sweet, it is so sweet. The grace of God, the grace of God, it is so sweet, it is so sweet. The grace, the grace, the grace of the Lord. Let me read this. I, I saw how this grace could be obtained. Go to your closet and there alone plead with God. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Be in earnest, be sincere, fervent prayer availeth much. Jacob, like Reso, in prayer, agonize. You know, sometimes when we talk, we are saved by grace. Sometimes uh, it is in such a way that we take it for granted that uh, since Jesus died, uh, there is nothing else to do. Yes. The role is now to plead for the mercies of the Lord. To plead for that grace of the Lord. Go with that prayer. And one of the most powerful prayers that will turn around your life is this. Create in me a clean heart. When you go to the original languages, that word create is the same word that was used when God was creating the world. In other words, the heart of man is so wicked, we are so evil, we are so captured by sin that it requires an equivalent power as that one which created the world. And that power can only be affected by Jesus himself, who is God. As this man pleaded for the mercies of the Lord, we also need to plead for the mercies of the Lord. As Simpson had this great discovery, he is a great sinner, but Jesus is a great savior. God is also inviting you today. That is the foundation of your progress. My dear viewers, have you ever wondered why things are not falling in place in this world? Have you ever wondered why you are a stranger to the peace of the Lord? Have you ever wondered why you, in spite of your accomplishments, you do not have the joy of the Lord? Make the great discovery. You were born a great sinner, but we have a great savior in Jesus. And then that. Don't rest until you have that grace of the Lord. I want to finish with this story as I pray. My Asian friend who gave a testimony here, the one who said he doesn't believe he's here, I have a story with him, but I want to tell you uh, just a bit of it, then we are going to pray. When I spoke and I told him about the power of Jesus, of course, his background is idol worshipping. I told him Jesus is more powerful than all those gods put together. It appealed to him. Then he told me, I have a prayer request. If Jesus can deal with that, I will discard all my idols and I'll begin worshipping Jesus. So, you know, there are times you're looking for people who pray, not even those who preach or even who sing. So I looked for all the prayer bands and I told them, Moind is getting converted on condition that eh, God answers his prayer. They prayed. When I went there two days later, he jumped to his feet and he said, God has answered my prayer. Then I reminded him his promise. So we went to his office, we removed all those idols, we went to his living room, wherever, kitchen, everywhere, and there were two cartons of idols. 
By the way, Asians are very religious, more religious than us, except that it is in the wrong direction. Me, I wanted us to ban those gods, but then he told me no. They were given to me by my mother at home, so I will return. I tried to persuade him, but anyway, he said, let them stay. Then I said, it's okay. Then after again, some two days, he called me. He told me, I want to return those idols. Then I said, Prasad, what happened? He said, no. You know, I'm visited by some other beings here. Some of them have no heads, and they point at me very bitterly. Some of them have heads, they have no hands. Those ones talk and they say, why did you remove the idols? You are going to face it. That is when I recognize idolatry is connected with spiritualism. I tried to persuade him the much I could in vain. So by the way, he returned those idols. You know, the devil does not let go easily for your information. Then after some months again, he engaged me in a talk, he told me, the ghosts are no longer coming. I have peace with them. They no longer trouble me. But then he confessed. From outside, it's okay. If you are keenly listening, he talked of the peace inside. But inside, I'm suffering. But I experienced that peace the two days when I'd removed the idols. So I'm thinking about that. Then one day, this happened. I went visiting Prasad, but the watchman stopped me. I remember it was eight in the night told me you cannot see Prasad. He says he's having his prayer time for one hour. So he said, no phone calls, no distractions, no friends. You know, I was amazed. Then I was like, this pagan that I taught how to pray the other day is now praying in such a way that I cannot even access him. Anyway, I respected him. He prayed like that for a whole year. After a year again, he removed those idols. The ghosts again came. Let me tell you, the devil does not let go easily. But this time, you remember, he had prayed for a whole year and one hour daily. When the ghosts came, he pointed at them and he said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, vanish. And they all disappeared, and today they have not come back. I remember he told me, he's yet to join church. Of course, the family, the rest of the family, they worship idols. But he himself has told me, till I die, I will not go back to the worship of idols. I don't know what you are holding on to. There is power, power, wonder-walking power in the blood of the Lord. saying, I don't just want to be a church member. I don't just want to exist in this world here. I want that power of God to rest upon my life, to turn me, to turn around my life. If you are telling God that, raise up your hand. My hand is also up. I know even preaching will not help me. It is connection with God. I will ask that you stand as I prepare to pray. The online viewers also want to pray with you. It is also possible that there is something you are struggling with, maybe morality, drug abuse, alcoholism. Just like Prasad failed the first time, it's possible you have failed again and again. But I want to tell you all is not lost with you. So uh, we will sing a different song from the one that is recorded there. The song I wanted is 493, like the woman at the world, 493. So prepare to that effect that the song will sing. So before we sing the song, who says, I don't just want to be a church member. I want the power of God to capture me. I want to be a recipient of the masses and the transforming power of Jesus. Then this indeed is going to be a happy new year. Raise up your hand as I pray. Okay, hands down. I have another question. Possibly, and I want you to be honest, you were once a Christian, you were excited, but you know with time you are a backslidden. 
you were even baptized, but you know you are backslidden. Or you have never been baptized at all. Or you have not been keeping the commandments of the Lord, including the Sabbath of the Lord. And you're telling the Lord, when you Christians go for that power, I also want to commit my life to the Lord. If there is such a person, I will offer prayer and your life will never be the same again because for that purpose I was sent here. If there is such a person, you were once baptized, but you know you are backslidden. Or you have never been baptized. Or you have been breaking the commandments of the Lord. You don't even keep the Sabbath of the Lord. And you are telling God, this beginning of the year, these 10 days is going to be mine. You want to turn around your life? If there is such a person, raise up your hand. I will also pray with you. Be honest. This is between you and your God. I'm seeing hands, eh? but when you raise up a hand, it doesn't go down. It goes up. Make sure the hand is beyond the head. These are the heroes of the events. And I want to say that confidently as we do this song here, walk up front here. And as I pray for the congregation, I'm going to pray for you. Even the online viewers, I'll want that you communicate with us. Tell us you've made a decision. Maybe later on I'll give you a number to which you can communicate. If we have a communication person here, I'll want you to give a number. Those ones who make their decisions uh, online, I'll want them to communicate with you. Somebody to give a number? Pardon? Um, the number is there? Somebody read that. Is, is it already somewhere where they can read? So please, res communicate there. Say you have made a decision. You have been a drunkard, an alcoholic, an immoral person. You have not been a Christian. Or you have been coming to church, but it's drama. But now you want to give your life to the Lord. Those of you that now want to have a new beginning, please come over here. If you are ashamed of God, he says, I will also be ashamed of you. If you acknowledge him, he says, he will acknowledge you before the angels. I can see already a hero walking over here. These are the heroes. So you will be doing a stanza, you pause, a stanza, you pause. Come over, these are the heroes. I said, you are once a Christian. You were even excited about the things of God, but you are backslidden. You are no longer excited. You want to capture that joy back. You want to come back to the Lord. Or you have never been baptized. Or you have been in the church here, but you have never experienced that peace and the joy of the Lord. Or you have not been keeping the Sabbath of the Lord. Remember I told you the story about Alan? He was captured by drugs, eh? but the Lord changed his life. So, if you are there, come over here. Let not the devil tell you you have gone too far, out, and, 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 too far away. I remember when I was in Kissing New Life, when I made a call like this, one young man told me, I've been a slave to pornography, immorality, drinking. Is there a chance I'll ever get to heaven? I said, 100% if you confess your sins. So, even those of you who are out there, I will offer prayer and your life will never be the same again. You were baptized. You were Christians. You were Christian. You were baptized. But you know you are backslidden. Or you have never been baptized. For the youths, you think you are enjoying life. But actually you are squandering your life. You have been breaking the commandments of the Lord. You have not been keeping the Sabbath of the Lord. You, have, you are not even baptized by immersion. Or you were baptized but not by immersion. My online viewers, you know where you are. You are captured by your lusts. You are captured by your immorality. You are captured by drug abuse. I would love to pray with you. The Jesus who saved me is capable of saving you. The Jesus who opened the eyes of this man here, today is open your eyes by this gospel here. So don't hesitate. Write a message to us. If there is something you wish that I pray with, with you, especially with regard to your character, God has sent me for that purpose. So we will sing the last stanza. And I will say that as we sing the last stanza, be praying. And uh, if there is that person remaining, this is the time to come. You know, I always say this, I would rather be last in heaven than to miss out in heaven. So if you are coming, please still come.
So those who are saying, God, I don't just want to be a church member. I want to fully enjoy the joy and the peace that comes from, I confess into you, raise up your hand. I'm a preacher, but my hand is also up. I'm aware I will not go to heaven based on my preaching practice. It will be based on the grace of God who has transformed my character. And let the hand remain up throughout. If it is tired, you exchange it with the other one. Let the hand remain up throughout. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we glorify and we praise your name. Forgive us our sins. Wash us by the blood of thy Son. Sanctify us and make us worthy in your sight. Oh God, we have seen the power of persistence. More so when we pray for your grace. Father, we have raised up our hands that we don't just want to be church members. Let your grace work upon us. Let us recognize our sins and confess them. And Father, I want to pray that in recognition of that, as many as have raised up their hands, give us a new beginning and we have a, a happy, blessed, prosperous year. These that have come up front, Lord, break the chains of wickedness, drug abuse, immorality, alcoholism, domestic violence. Father, break those chains. There could be others who did not gather courage. May the Spirit continually work on them. The online viewers, Lord, let them not stay to Lord, communicate to us, and we will pray, and I know you will reach out to them. And Father, as we have now decided for you, I know we also have our physical needs. Meet us at the point of our needs, but finally, remember us in the heavenly kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.